Welcome everybody to the Comfy Cove. Brand new video, brand new name, rebrand, first video under this name. Um, if you're looking for my Twitch, it is Comfy Cove Gaming. That is where solely gaming will be happening. Don't worry, gaming will still happen on this channel, but Comfy Cove allows me to branch out to some of the other things that I like, like tech and music and games and all that kind of stuff. I hope you like the name. I do, I really like it. Here we go, today, we're gonna be talking about my brand new keyboard that I use to game and that I even use at work. This guy right here, you see him? Oh yeah, there you go. So that is the Logitech G915 10 keyless. Since it's the 10 keyless, it doesn't have an unpad. So, yaha. <laughs> it connects using a USB dongle and can also connect through Bluetooth. It's low profile and wireless. Don't worry, we're gonna switch to another camera and we can get a little bit more into the details. So this keyboard is smaller since it is a low profile keyboard and it also has that 10 keyless. So this is a really small keyboard, very thin as you, I mean, it's not incredibly thin, but it's a lot thinner than some of the other keyboards I've had. Uh, this allows it to fit inside my backpack along with my school computer, my tablet, along with any binders and or papers that I need for the day. It has a lovely, a uh, gray kind of metallic look and has awesome low profile black keycaps. There is also a white version you can buy with white keycaps if that is more your style. So this keyboard is well constructed with little to no deck flex. It feels very premium and it is, like I said, nice and light because it is nice and small. On the back, it has a two stage keyboard tilt with the one in the middle being your height adjust. So you can find the angle that suits you best. When I'm at work, believe it or not, I like to have it flat on the desk. But when I game, I actually prefer the second stage. That way it is as tilted as possible. The keyboard, not me. So the switches themselves is a low profile brown key switch. It is a GL tactical switch. Uh, they say it has a discernible bump at the point of actuation. And I honestly believe that statement. It does feel like you are pressing it when you do, especially with this keyboard. Like when I press the key, when I press the space bar, I feel that bump, any key, I feel like a bump that is being pressed. It makes you know that the key was pressed. It's not like a bottoming out bump, but you know when it's gone and it's pretty, it's pretty nice. Although I feel like the space bar is like one of the most prominent ones with the bump, in my opinion. Believe it or not, I actually wrote the overall script for this with this keyboard itself. And let me tell you, this keyboard feels amazing to type on. It's really quiet to where you can't even hear it through the microphone. And because of its low switches, it's not fatiguing to type on all day so that I can game in the morning go to work for eight hours, come home and game even more. All the other keyboards I've used were not low profile. So this is my first dive into the low profile keyboards. And I honestly have to say, I love it. All of the other keyboards I've used use tactile switches, which are my switches of choice, but none of them have the same all day feel that this one does. I can't type on them all day. Otherwise I would need breaks in between and it would just, it's not as fun, honestly. So some of the features that this can, keyboard has is that it has dedicated media buttons right here and an analog volume wheel. I didn't really know how satisfying having a wheel like this is and how just awesome it feels to be able to just be like, okay, I want a little bit quieter. You just lightly move the wheel instead of hitting a button and it goes up by like this number, that number. It's just, you get to like fully and like fine tune your volume. It makes it really fun and easy to adjust your music when you work and or play games. And because of the media keys, it makes it really easy to pause when you need to focus. Easy also to go backwards, forwards, and or just mute the sound entirely. Uh, this uses Logitech's light speed wireless technology for both the USB dongle and Bluetooth connections. That's right, it is both wireless and Bluetooth. They boast a one millisecond performance, meaning that I can play games with confidence that when I press a key, it will be quick, accurate, and give me an advantage above the other players. It can run for about 40 hours on a single charge. This means I can game and work without needing to charge it or carry around a charger. I use it all day and plug it in at night. 
I could even go a few days before charging it again. It has a dedicated game button, which is right here, to disable window keys while you are gaming. It even has a backlight button here to adjust the level of the backlight so that you can turn off the RGB when you're working or if you decide to save some battery, which may I remind you, you don't have to do for about 40 hours. My only gripe with the keyboard is that it uses micro USB. It's not USB-C, I don't know why, but honestly, it's not the biggest issue because you don't need to charge it that often. It does, however, mean you will always have to have one with you when you travel for long periods of time. The per key RGB can be adjusted using their software, Logitech G Hub. You can also use it to monitor the battery life of your keyboard, change key assignments, macros, and you can even adjust what the game mode button does. Might not just take off windows, you could assign what it turns off. If you wanna see a size comparison, uh, here it is compared to my Drop Alt keyboard, which is around the same price. It's honestly not that much bigger. And this one still has the arrow keys. But this one also is a full sized, not a low profile. In conclusion, I really love this keyboard. It feels nice, fits my lifestyle perfectly. It's completely wireless and can last all day. I have no issues with this keyboard or its software. And it saves so much desk space. Now, here's the real question. Is this keyboard worth $200 though? Yeah, I think so. If it meets all your needs and you have the money to spend. There's probably a cheaper keyboard out there, but you'll probably have to build it. But if you're like me and don't do that, then I think that this is just an easy buy. The portability and the connections it uses are way too good to pass up. You can take this to work along with your folders, binders, laptops, or tablets and even many more. There's even more space above all that. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them down below in the comment section. Make sure you subscribe so you get notified when this cove opens up again with something new.